Okay, so one of the things we've just been looking at are three options of chest press. We've looked at fully stabilized with the pad up here. And we'll really look into position that somewhere around the shoulder blades, the scapula, or just below. So in essence, we've got full stability. We looked at that in one of the clips. We also looked at the, the challenge associated with freestanding. So freestanding would be like it would be on any other cable system. There's no stabilization system. Therefore, that's the only option you have. Um, and the third option we looked at was obviously partial stability when the pad was here, stabilizing at the top of the pelvis. Now, they were the three options that, was look, that were looked at in this study by Peckinpah and colleagues from 2009. And one of the things we noticed was when the pad was fully stabilizing, so when the pad was up here in between the shoulder blades, we noticed that they could lift more load. Now, not just more load, 212% more load in this case, which means a significantly greater stimulus for muscular change. So if your goal is shape and size, then maybe you'll need a greater resistance to affect that change. The risk is, of course, that ultimately the exercise, the weight is light, such that it becomes muscular endurance, and that's the only thing you can do. You have to train long enough to train muscular endurance freestanding. With full stability, we could lift 212% more load, as the study showed. What's interesting is we could lift 212% more load fully stabilized or partially stabilized. Remember when the pad was stabilizing at the top of the pelvis. So where the pad was in terms of providing stability was not a limiting factor in the ability to shift more weight. Remember the ability to shift more weight may change the physiological response. So that was one of the key outcomes of the key findings. Remember we mentioned earlier, with no stability pad, we're limited to around 40% of our body weight. Anyone beyond a beginner that may move the load more towards a muscular endurance type load. The other key thing was looking at muscular activation. Now, take a step back. Many people will come to this kind of unit to train the abdominals during a chest press type movement. So the received thinking, commonly we're, we're told and taught that by standing up using a cable, we're going to be engaging the abdominals. Interestingly, that study showed that there was no significant difference, whether there was no stability, so they were freestanding, or whether the pad was back up here at the shoulder blade height in full stability. So there was no difference between freestanding or full stability in the abdominal activation, namely rectus abdominis and external obliques. So kind of a challenge to the received thinking. We can go one step further because we saw clearly when we have the pad in here stabilizing the top of the pelvis, we saw more abdominal activation. We saw the subject getting a little abdominal shape because it's an unaccustomed exercise and those muscles are being worked. So when the pad was stabilizing the top of the pelvis, it was acting like a fulcrum, which really effectively targeted the abdominals. As we've said, the rectus abdominis and the external obliques. That same study by Peck and Power and colleagues from 2009 showed 184% more abdominal activation. So significantly more, and importantly, that was using the same load. Remember we mentioned earlier, you can lift more weight with stability, but the comparison was made between the three freestanding, fully stabilized, and partially stabilized, using the same load, measuring the abdominal activation. And here we had 184% more activation.